Good morning, everybody. Hi, great to see you. Welcome to our Discovery Day. Good morning. Some new faces there. It'd be great to meet you later and uh, some faces that we know. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, Chester, if you, I'm, I'm going to open up in a second. If you could just check the waiting room as we go along, that'd be amazing. And then, and then I'll be handing over. Thank you very much. Okay, I think we're going to get started. At Uspire, we aspire to creating, bringing together the finest commercial leaders in the world. It's our vision and, you know, it's so, it has been so amazing in the last year or so to be able to bring people together virtually. So that's what we're doing here today. So you are now, um, whether you like it or not, you are now a member of our community of commercial leaders. So welcome. The other thing that the, our vision has allowed us to do is actually to be able to think about how you bring people together. And this is an example. The other thing that we've brought to, together is a community of leaders in our use by network. And one of the things that has been absolutely amazing is to be able to grow that network virtually, which we, again, as I said, we're doing now. We do that in three ways. ways. Our network actually helps in three ways. Award-winning speakers, we have one here with us today, um, Charlie, who we're gonna, gonna introduce you to, along with a number of other amazing guests, Ben Shepherd, Ian Hollingsworth, Sean Smith, and who are all gonna be introduced to you by uh, my colleague, Chester. We also support by what, I, what we call peer-to-peer -peer problem solving, which is so important because it's confidential space for you to actually be able to share your issues, your challenges it, as a leader, to be able to do that in a confidential space where you can then take that back to your business and um, to solve those problems. And we've had some amazing successes this year, virtually with that one as well. And then finally, commercial coaching and mentoring is a key, key, key pillar to our use by network. And I'm absolutely delighted to say that we are gonna offer anybody here an, an hour's um, complimentary coaching with one of our directors of your choice. You'll see some of them are here. Most of them are in orange and others will make themselves known to you um, after this session so that you can possibly share a challenge, possibly share an opportunity and get some immediate help, which again, grows our community of the finest commercial leaders in the world. So today, our topic is discover the power of personal branding. Discover the power of personal branding. And it's going to be run by our director of consulting, Chester Robinson. And I'm really, really excited to, to see that. We've got lots of guests and really excited to see that. The purpose of this is to think about you as a leader. And I'm going to hand over to Chester to do exactly that. I don't know whether he's going to explain the Winnie the Pooh or not. Over to you, Chester. Thank you very much, Amanda. If you could just stop sharing the screen, I think I've seen enough uh, poo bear for, for, uh, for this morning. So good morning, everybody. Welcome. Uh, conscious of the, those of you in the UK, you might be feeling a little bit drowsy after a, a late night, particularly if you're an England supporter. If you're beyond the, the boundaries of England, I should imagine that you couldn't care less and you've got a good night's sleep. So I promised you an interactive webinar for those of you that saw the LinkedIn post. So I'm going to get straight into that. Pen and papers at the ready, please. I want you to think about you as a brand. So Amanda, could you just spotlight my camera as well so people can read what's there? Thank you very much. If you had to describe yourself as a car brand, which would you be? If you had to describe yourself as a car brand, which would you be? I'd like you to drop some of your answers into the chat box, please. See, you know, all of a sudden you're getting a little bit nervous. You've got to chuck the car brand in. Who's going to be first? Oh, some Teslas, some German brands coming in here. Land Rover Minis. Okay. So that's the easy part of the question. The next part is why. Why would you describe yourself as that particular car brand. Now the reflectives are gonna take some time to think about. So if you were owl and a cool reflective blue, you'd be thinking about it. 
Bernard, definitely read straight out the traps. Reliability is the reason he chose that. Solid, reliable. Thank you, Rich. What else? Freedom. Freedom for the open road. Is that a motorbike you chose there, Jonathan, was it? Great stuff. Okay, so brands have got reasons behind them. Reasons why we choose those brands. Okay, they're fun, fab and fast. Love it, Pippa. Reliable coming in quite often. Reliable is coming in quite often. Okay, I'm going to just launch a quick poll because I'm fascinated just from my own research to know whether or not is the car you chose the same as the one that you own? Just a quick yes, no. Ooh. I'm just fascinated purely but out of whether or not people have chosen the brand that they own because it reflects who they are or whether or not they've actually chosen a brand that they might aspire to be. So folks coming in, keep them coming. Okay, let's go for that. That's fascinating. If you can see that, you should be able to see that. Amanda, can I have a quick thumbs up? You can see the, 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 the results. 50-50. 50% of you own the car that you thought you would want to be and another 50% don't. Fascinating. Don't know what that tells us, but there we go. Lovely stuff. Keeping with the interactive nature, a quiz for you. I'm gonna ask you to let, uh, name this famous person. Now, some of you might guess who that famous person is on the first description. Some of you might guess second or third question, and some of you will probably not have a clue. If, particularly if you're within the UK, you're more likely to guess who this person is, but it's all right not to know. So the first question is, this person appeared for Manchester United, look, keeping with the football theme, this person uh, appeared for Manchester United against Bayern Munich in the Champions League. So just have a, uh, keep, keep the answers to yourself as you go. Uh, second question, this same individual beat Michael Schumacher to the podium at Silverstone during a Formula One race. The same person beat Michael Schumacher to the podium of a Silverstone race. This same individual played Tin Henman at Wimbledon. This person does exist, by the way. This same person appeared for England against Australia at Headingley, and that's cricket. Appeared for England to play cricket at Headingley. This same person released a hit single with the group The Happy Mondays. Now I'm gonna put myself onto gallery view mode, and I just want a quick thumbs up from you if you know who this person is, and a thumbs down if you don't. A thumbs up if you know who this person is and a thumbs down if you don't. Okay, this person does exist. I'm seeing lots of thumbs down, funnily enough. Right. Am I still spotlighted, Amanda? Okay, so here we have this person as part of the Manchester United team. We've got Roy Keane on the far end. Looking all the way down, how many players do you count on this side? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve players lined up for Manchester United against Bayern Munich. Here is that same individual beating Michael Schumacher onto the podium at Silverstone. Does anybody know who this person is yet? Here he is again at Wimbledon, having a knock-up with Tin Henman. Uh, ahead of one of his games and here he is leaving the pitch of play for England against Australia at Headingley. This gentleman is Carl Powers. Carl Powers, the legend that is Carl Powers and here he is with the Happy Mondays with the hit single that he made with them. Carl Powers is a bit of a Marmite character he had a clear vision though, that he wanted to appear at every single major sporting event that he could possibly get to. Not only did he want to be at it, he wanted to be in it. And he had that vision and he wanted to live it. 
in order to live his vision, he had to use his creativity and his imagination to be able to unlock the power of turning it next to skulls and gigs and Roy Keane. Okay. Now, lots of you will have a vision. Some of you may have a mission, but are you living your dream? Are you working out how you can truly achieve that? Now, some people would say, well, how is, how is Carl Powers a brand then? Because I've, I've not heard of him. Well, Damien Hirst, the famous artist, referred to, uh, referred to him as a modern artist, a true, Martin, um, a true modern artist, because he was able to create unique art installations, most memorable art installations. So if you've got somebody like Damien Hirst calling him a brand, then he is. But the challenge, as with all brands, is that if you don't invest your time, if you don't invest energy, if you don't keep investing in them, they become redundant. Brands become redundant because they're not front of mind. And if you think of a, a number of brands like the cars you've talked about, they continue to invest and innovate to be front of mind. Now, Carl Powers hit the headlines in 2001, 2003, and lots of people have not heard of Carl Powers because he's not doing what he did that made him famous. And therefore you do need to think about your branding. How flexible is it? How does it adapt over time? How are you investing in it? So when you're thinking about what is brand you, what do you stand for? How do others describe you? And how do you continue to promote yourself? Because as a leader, you need to think about the shadow that you cast on others. Now, I've talked about the word brand quite a bit. I'd like you to just drop into the chat facility um, what you think a brand is. What do you think a brand is? Because I'm going to tell you that a brand isn't your logo. That's branding. I'm going to tell you that it's um, not necessarily your website. That's not your brand either. What do you think your brand is? What is a brand? Great stuff, Rich. Your values, a belief system. Absolutely, your purpose, what you stand for. Yep. What else? The way you go about it, your methodology. I love that, Paula. It's the way that you methodically go about that. A perception. It's your why. Love it, Matt. Thank you very much. So when we talk about brands and branding, quite often what comes up is the name. You know, what is the name? If you think of people as brands, you might think of somebody like Oprah. What does Oprah stand for as an individual? How does she make herself memorable, for example? Is she distinctive? Can she own that brand and that name? And how flexible is she over time? And then the final element of that brand name is likable. So these are all feelings and emotions that you're seeing behind me. Feelings and emotions. Brands are about the impact you have on others. Now, great leaders understand the impact they have on others because it matches the intention that they set out to achieve. And if you were with me in a session that we ran yesterday, Amanda talked about Great people, great leaders have an impact that matches the intention that they set out to achieve. It's an emotional connection. The shadow that you cast is the intent that you set out to achieve. So as you think about yourself as leaders, as you set out and think about yourself as brands, how would you describe yourself as a leader? How would you describe yourself as a leader? What's your leadership brand and branding? Are you modern, full, high octane? Are you driven? Do you go fast? Are you multi-utility? Do you have lots of capabilities, lots of capacity? Do you take lots on board? Are you new? Are you innovative? Are you creative? Are you alternative? Are you more of an explorer? Do you take the business and organizations into 
the, the back of beyond, beyond the bounds of possibility? Or are you just quite extreme? Are you all about the image? Are you about standing out? Are you about getting people to think and do things completely differently? Or are you feeling maybe just a little bit dilapidated, a little bit worn out, a little bit left on the shelf? What kind of leader do you think you want to be? And how are you going to stand out? So I'm going to take you through um, a model in a minute called, well, in a little while, called the Brand King. And we're going to talk about you, we're going to talk about your offering, and we're going to talk about how you plan for that with the insights that come from within you and who you are. And in order to shape your thinking around the brand key, I'm going to ask three individuals to join me. And I'm going to ask Amanda to pin those individuals. Uh, and I'm going to ask uh, Ben, Ivan and Charlie uh, to join me in a bit of a three, four way interview. And I'm going to start with Ben, if that's all right. Amanda, can you just give me a thumbs up that you've pinned those? Yeah, people? I'm just um, managing the tech on that. Thank you. Add a spotlight. Here we go. Here he is. Wonderful stuff. Hey there, Ben. How, how's things? How's your knee? Um, it's okay. I'd just like to point out I'm very on brand with my top today. Uh, <laughs> got the memo. At least one of us did, Chester. Where's yours? Where's your orange? <laughs> hey, I've got to stand out. Check checks are us. <laughs> okay. Underpants. Uh, my knee, I had my, in case anybody didn't, well, they wouldn't know. Why would they know? I've had my, uh, I ruptured my ACL. So I had an operation two days ago to, um, to sort that out so uh, I've taken quite a lot of morphine so watching a good friend of mine from university conduct this is quite surreal I'm going to be honest Jess. <laughs> Great stuff well Ben I really appreciate you taking time out to join us I hope the morphine doesn't trip you up with some unexpected <laughs> answers to the question so if you surf soft piste a little bit then I do apologize Ben I'm really fascinated for you to share with people how somebody in the public arena um, both sees themselves and has developed themselves into the brand that we know of as Brand Shepherd. I obviously know you from my background, so I've watched you develop. But you know, how did Brand Shepherd develop in the public kind of public arena? Uh, it's interesting, actually, because I think um, a lot of what happens within the world of broadcasting as a as a presenter and, and the media is uh, decisions are made often with feel does it feel like the right choice does that feel like the right opportunity does that feel like i'm doing the right thing um so I... Ooh. is that me or is that ben that's got a reception sorry you kind of had a bit of a wobble then ben am i back in yes um and uh yeah so i started working as a runner for a weather company up in birmingham and um and it was there that I started getting the idea to sort of, they suggested I start trying to get into television. So I sort of, like with most things, you sort of stumble and find your way in this sort of industry, which I've really enjoyed. And over the years, and I've been working in telly now for about sort of 23, and in that from where you start to where you want to be is, uh, it, you have to be more strategic about it. I've worked that out over the years. And it got to the point where the decisions that we were making and that I was making with my agent um, and my family as to jobs that I was doing and how I was being seen was a little bit scattergun initially. Um, and if we wanted to be, sort of, we wanted to work out where I want to be, if we wanted to create, and I think you mentioned this, if you want to create a vision as to where you want to end up, that will help you guide your path to get there. I, I did some interesting uh, brand planning with with my sister and her husband they have a company that did a, a similar thing to what you're doing here Chester and it was it was fascinating because one of the great uh, ideas that they had that they presented me with was my niece who was a little baby at the time sitting on a bench and there was a plaque at the top of the bench I mean how many people sit on the bench overlooking a beautiful view and there's a little plaque saying this bench is in memory of Chester Robinson uh, he was a passionate excitable uh, charismatic person and he will be sorely missed or something like that and the idea was what do I want that plaque to say when eventually I have finished my career, when I've retired? What do I want people to remember me as? And if you can work out what you want that plaque to say, then you can start plotting a course to get there. Um, and through sort of exploration with them and um, going out to consumers and sort of doing lots of focus groups about me and what I do, I was able to work out all these things you've talked about. 
what are my values? What do I stand for? What is my strategic difference between other competitors? Who are my competitors? Now, of course, the competitors for me change because uh, I can move into a different environment. At 2010, I went from doing the breakfast to going into Sky Sports. And so that environment changed dramatically for me. Understanding I could make that move was really important, though, and that viewers would, would accept me in that environment. Because often you will see someone getting a job doing something on television and the viewers instinctively don't like it. They don't feel comfortable with that person. They don't feel like they fit. But when you know that there is already a reception to that, and I knew that actually people perceived me as somebody who loved their sport, was knowledgeable about sport, I could make that transition uh, comfortably and then enjoyed sort of nine years working for Sky Sports before I then came back to breakfast TV as well. So I think it's been understanding that my, I am a brand in my own right. Obviously I'm, I'm still me, but understanding that there is a, a brand that I have to be true to and authentic with as well, I think is absolutely key. Because if I, st much as I would love to do Love Island, Chester, as you and I have discussed at length uh, for probably far too long, um, I don't think that would necessarily sit particularly well with my brand. I wouldn't necessarily work for my consumers and that would jar and that could end up doing some damage and protecting the brand and protecting sort of what it is that I do professionally is, is something that I take very seriously and we plan very carefully. That's fascinating because it sounds like you started out on this journey that you, know, you were meandering around and then mm. as, as the agent then actually took you through a structured process for and for a guy that likes pictures that might must have been quite a painful process as you imagine but uh, yeah you I, I i undoubtedly that all that you know me i'm not I, i'm certainly not about detail I'm, I'm about sort of getting seeing sort of what it is that if you can explain to me why i need to get somewhere then then i can i can get it and i can grab it i don't i undoubtedly have adhd and i have various other issues that have allowed me to do what i do and have given me various opportunities but sort of understanding and focusing on detail has never been a good one for me so going through a process like that was hugely hugely important um and and allow me to get to where i am today and it's not it's something that you sort of you're constantly working on as well it's it's not something that you just settle on and then it stays there you're constantly adjusting it looking at it and making sure you're staying true to that sort of path and that authenticity is is hugely important as well i'm hoping that people are kind of taking notes because that's that concept of how do i reflect what i'm hearing back on myself as an individual and how am i going to turn up in front of my teams in front of my organizations Ben, final question before I pivot to Ivan, and I'm going to ask Amanda just to spotlight Ivan as well. It is just where's Brand Shepherd going? You talked about it evolves. Is that still a conscious process, or is that something that you're kind of still mulling over? Yeah, it's a very conscious process. We're in the we've we've been working on a new project um, which we are launching over the next few months, which is a, a sort of really big project just in terms of. Uh, exploring more what it is that I've so what one of the things that came out particularly from the brand planning that I did is is that I really enjoy meeting people and, and trying to bring out the best in people that's one of the key my key drivers I think through what we've all been through over the last couple of years um, and through the pandemic and this sort of since uh, Brexit and the division that huge division that we have in in opinion um, I think what I've discovered is there's a lot of really amazing news out there that doesn't get shared. There's a lot of incredible people doing incredible things that never shout about it because they're not interested in, in glory. They're doing it just because they want to. And I'm sort of looking at trying to work on shining a light on that. So we've got this big project that we're launching um, called Humble Heroes, which we're going to work on exploring that in, in many different dimensions on screen, in literature, social media, just to sort of try and keep exploring sort of the, the opportunity that, that I see to help other people shine as well, which is where I certainly get a great deal of my value personally from being able to share other people's stories. There's a thing that someone once asked me why I ended up becoming a TV presenter and that was because I love, I love meeting people, I love finding out about things and I love being able to, to share those things with other people, to infuse other people with, with the interesting bits and pieces that I found, whether that's sport, news, entertainment, human interest, business, whatever that might be. Uh, so I've been very lucky to do that. And it's, you know, it's, it's an ongoing process, Chess, and it's not, a, it's not an exact science, much as it would be lovely if it was. Um, and along the way, you sort of, you can trip up and make a few mistakes. But as long as, I think as long as you, you're sort of conscious of where you're going and you're conscious of, if you take a little risk here and there of what that might mean, um, then, then hopefully it won't be sort of terminal. Oh, thanks very much, Ben. I'm conscious that um, shine was something you talked about. I'm going to pivot to Ivan and talk about how he's made other people shine through the work that mm. he's been doing now. 
Um, ben, if you wouldn't mind staying on, I know there's some comments in the chat. If, if people have got questions they want to ask you, then maybe you can respond to them entirely your choice. But I'm conscious with morphine, you might want to go and have a little <laughs> lie down as well. Ivan, great to see you. Thanks very much for joining us. I'd love for you just to share with people a succinct kind of story behind your brand in terms of how you've ended up being the leader of the charity that you're involved in. How are you, and, and then we'll talk about how you help others shine. Um, well, sort of fallen into it, Chester, really. Um, I think, you know, through circumstance of, of our, um, our son being born 12 years ago with a, with a potentially life-threatening heart defect, um, we did what a lot of people do and, and, and tried to say thank you. And, and, and um, yourself and Ben and, and, and Rich on the call came on a journey with us, I suppose we'd call it, around doing something uh to thank those people that saved his life and it started out um very clumsily i think we'll all attest to uh by just trying to do something in the most unstructured unprofessional and probably unsafe way that you could imagine <laughs> um but it was really successful probably because it wasn't uh, particularly slick and the way that we we were authentic in that and and i guess what i did is probably three or three years or four years after we got into it and raised a significant amount of money and profile was then tried to unpick what it was um, that had done that because I think lots of people run marathons and lots of people do silly challenges but we'd, we'd clearly been able to create something so I think the way that I started to understand that was we made our story about Seb we made our story about our son um, that was intentional at the beginning, but actually what it did is it, it, it gathered a group of people to do something that was above and beyond their own ego themselves. And I think that that plays into that emotional bit when people talk about their why or their purpose or their vision. In truth, we've probably all read and heard a lot of talk around it, but actually it, it cuts to a really emotional part about, um, to Ben's point, you know, how do you want people to feel about you? And I think what we did in our fundraising was that, that we brought a group of people together um, and, 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 and achieved something probably greater than they otherwise thought was possible. And so within that, I then, I suppose, started to try and understand what that meant to me. Um, and for a period of time, I'm not going to lie, I, I thought I was defined by fundraising or challenges. Therefore, that when I stopped fundraising and being, uh, doing all these silly challenges, that you'd lose all that purpose. So I went through a bit of a dip of actually um, trying to understand what I actually stood for that didn't sit on whether I was in my day job, whether I was fundraising or now, as you say, as a chair of a charity. Um, so it wasn't smooth and sometimes it was quite painful because you lose your way. I suppose pit sports people call it, you know, when they retire, they go into that wilderness, don't they? Because they, they define themselves by that role. And so I... I've been on that journey. Um, I, I struggle with the concept of thinking of myself as a brand, um, but I understand that I have a position within the charity that requires me to, to behave in a certain way. And so I think my goal is to live into my why. So what is my why? Whether I can always articulate that in a clear way, I don't know, but I know what, I know what it is inside of me. And do, I, do other people feel as a result of interacting with me, working with me, that, that that is having that emotional impact on them. And I don't know whether I'm doing that or not, but it's something that I will always be aspiring to achieve rather than constantly measuring whether or not I've done it. I don't think, don't think that's necessarily helpful, but that, that's kind of where I am now. So you're kind of a, a little similar to Ben in terms of this journey that you're on. What I loved was that you got out there and you gave something a go and that you involved others in the process and you allowed others to shape that 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 image of what you were trying to achieve collectively i love the the fact that you're prepared to share the fact that actually you had this dip because lots of leaders go through that when they have a bit of a knock knockback if you've got a, a coach or a mentor or ben has an agent they're the ones constantly helping you plan so that you don't have that dip because I'm sure De Ben will be testament to the fact you can't you can't go out of the spotlight for too long without losing the relevance uh, and connection with individuals. 
how do you marry up kind of being a chairman of uh, the Heart Foundation up in Newcastle, the, the Chuff organization, um, and your professional work life? Because you kind of wear two hats. Are they one in the same or are they, do, do you split the two? Are you two different brands? Uh, no, well, that probably plays back to my original point of the dip because when our fundraising was doing very well and I was doing a lot of campaigning at the time as well around securing the future of the heart unit up here in Newcastle, um, I felt um, passionate. I felt um, like I had a seat at the table. I felt like I had value. And then I went into a very transactional role in my day job in sales and didn't. And so I, I reached that real crossroads of, do I just need to walk away from my professional thing because I'm just getting no value I don't feel like I'm being treated as an adult and actually where I came out of that which 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 plays to my original point was actually the realization that I am unapologetically me yeah and that and that what makes me um have impact or whatever I do within the fundraising and the charity sector and the campaigning side is still the same person in the day job there's just a few different skills I have to I have to execute so I think that that has made me firstly more fulfilled in my day job that I don't try and wear two different hats uh, and and it actually saw a a significant change in the success within my sales role because I stopped trying to be something that I wasn't and started to, and just went into that uh, probably something about reaching your 40s or something I don't know about you know uh, some something about being comfortable in your own skin uh, and everything but um but but yeah, so it hasn't been straightforward at all, but it now means I think that it doesn't matter what role I do in my life, parent, friend, chair of a charity, that I, I actually almost future-proof myself based on the fact that I'm not defined by those, those titles. No, and you're talking about emotions there, and there's a comment just popped in from Giles in chat saying if it, you know, it would be nice if it was super easy, right? And, and maybe I've misread what he said, but emotions are difficult things to pigeonhole and you've got to live and act and work and deliver in the moment. At the same time, you're thinking about the future and what, the, what that point is. And th therefore, I'm going to ask uh, Amanda to bring in Charlie Worley now, because I think it's a perfect pivot point, uh, Ivan, to talk about somebody that's been in a corporate environment and then decided that actually the two hats couldn't become one. And you've had to go through a pivot, haven't you, Charlie? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm now a life and career redesign coach. But as you said, my background is corporate. And I set my sights when I left uni, I was going to be a marketing manager, because I, I didn't know what else to do. I didn't have a burning passion <laughs> to be a doctor or a lawyer or something. And that worked for me, I managed to get into roles, I got promoted. Um, I worked for Green King, a startup, Yo Sushi, and then Sodexo. And um, I ended up getting into a global head role with them of, of concept development. And I had this patch that was from Alaska to um, Australia and everything in between. And, and my identity was very much around this international businesswoman. I love to travel. It was all about how small a suitcase can I pack and how quickly can I get through airports and uh, deliver what I needed to deliver. And I, and I loved it. And I lived all over the world. Um, but fortunately, I realized sort of pre-pandemic that um, this wasn't very fulfilling for me. And actually, I ended up in a sector that just was really contrary to my values. I was in energy and resources and working in mining and oil and gas. And while I love turning up and shocking people and being one of the only women in the room, and I love to challenge the status quo, um, I'm a, you know, a bit of an eco-warrior. And it was just so contrary to my values that, you know, it, it just, it taught me how important your values are. And actually not standing by my values nearly broke me. And so I decided to change careers and I rechained as a, as a coach in 2016, 2017 I left. And I had to, I think Ivan said this, I had to, it, the hardest thing I had to do was to leave my corporate identity and to put on LinkedIn that I was now an executive coach because I so identified with who I was. Um, so yeah, it was a really interesting transition for me. And just talk us through what you've then done to rebrand yourself. 
Um, I think I really had to embrace it. I actually had to get comfortable with my new identity. And, and that took a bit of time. You know, going out, I'd say to people, I'm Charlie, you know, so um, what do you do? Oh, well, I'm an ex-global head. And okay, no, I'm not. Hi, I'm Charlie, I'm the life and career redesign coach. And I'm actually really passionate about that. And I help women to uh, design a life and career that they love and not to settle. And that's what matters to me. And I think once I really identified with my message and what I could share with people, it became less about me and who I, it became more about who I was serving. Fabulous. Fabulous. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Ivan. Uh, thank you, Ben. I'm conscious of time. I think TED Talks talks about 17 minutes being the optimum. So we're going to pivot now and we're going to get people to start thinking interactively about themselves. So Amanda, if you could just unpick a spotlight of our guests. Ben, Ivan, Charlie, thank you very much for joining us. If you're going to stay on, please feel free to uh, uh, answer some of the questions you might get by direct message in chat or the likes of. So what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about you and your plan. And we're not going to talk about marketing or the experience received uh, because there's just not enough time. This is just a discovery day. What we are going to do is just get you to start thinking about the business that you're in and the strategy that you're trying to achieve as a leader. We're going to get you to then think about uh, your personal development. What is it that you want to get out of life? We've talked very much from Ivan, Ben and Charlie about being true to themselves, doing what they want to do, thinking about the emotions. And for lots of people buried in work, emotion is quite a difficult subject to front up to because there's always a quicker task that you can get done. And then we're going to then talk about self-promotion. We're going to talk about how do you then potentially promote yourself? I'm going to show you a slide and the model uh, and a model now. One second. Of course, it's never quite as quick as you think it's going to be. This model is called a brand key. A brand key. So this is a tool or technique that you can use. Just going to make sure that I can see you guys. And so a brand key. This was given to me by a colleague of mine called Zoe Hayward. She was a brand manager at Unilever. And it was quite an eye opener for me because I'd worked in sales all my life. I hadn't been a marketeer at all. And Zoe shared this with me in terms of the way that Unilever build brands around insight and they build brands around unique proposition, your offer, and around values and beliefs. And the core central part of a brand key is your essence, a clear, concise expression of what makes you you. And you heard Charlie having to re-express her brand essence. I'm Charlie, I'm a life coach, rather than Charlie, I'm the global head of a dot, dot, dot. If you can succinctly boil everything that you do down into your essence, then you've got to your brand key. You've unlocked that opportunity. So I'm going to ask Amanda to drop a file into the chat facility so that you can have a go at this, because I told you this was an interactive webinar as part and parcel of my promise. So she's going to upload uh, a, the file into the chat facility for you to download and to use as your aid memoir. So you can, you can print it off, you can write on it, or you can just read it and you can have a go at this yourself. So I'm going to take my background off at the same time, see if I can multitask now. I'm going to be asking you to give this a go and we're going to take a coffee break at the same time. So we're going to take about 15 minutes to allow you to have a go at completing your brand key. Brand key, I want you to think about starting from the foundations up. Your brand key is going to start with your core strengths. What are you good at? What do you do well? Thinking about your, who your competitors are. Ben talked about other TV presenters potentially. Ivan might talk about the charities and where revenue is going to the charitable sector in terms of who he's competing against as the chair, chairman of a charity. Importantly, who are you trying to influence? Who are you trying to influence and inspire? 
You know, what is your audience? Put yourself in your audience's shoes. They might be your team. They might be your business. They might be your peers and colleagues. Who are you trying to influence and inspire? And then more importantly, what do they need to hear from you? What do they need to hear from you? And how are you going to convert it? That will give you the first pillar of the, and a foundation at the bottom. This will give you your insight. Sat above that is then your offer. Set above that is then your offer. What is it that you can then offer to others? Thinking about your USPs, thinking about uh, the benefits of, of buying you. Why do they choose Ben Shepherd as the particular TV presenter for Celebrity Love Island 2025? Is he the right fit? What would be the benefits of doing that? What would make him different? Maybe he should be on Strictly Come Dancing, but then again, Ivan may well have be be beaten him to it. So that's your offer. What is it that you bring? And then laddered above that is you. What is it about you, your values, your beliefs, your personality? Some of you will be clear in your why. And why should people believe? What's your reason to believe the proof points, okay? So the time is 10 past 10. We're gonna take a 15 minute break for you to grab a coffee, have a leg stretch, and to reflect on what you've heard this morning. And I'm gonna, when we come back from the break, I'm going to ask Sean Smith, from Nomad Foods to share how it, this tool has helped him. And then I'm gonna ask you to share some of your thoughts and reflections in a breakout group before I share with you another tool in terms of the brand and service proposition that we'll come on to in due course. Ben, are you gonna be dialing out from now or are you gonna hang on for a little bit longer? I can't hang on, I'm afraid. <clears throat> it's been uh, really interesting though, Chester. I, you know, it's, uh, it's always very exciting. You all know Chester in a business context, I know Chester is a bit of an idiot rugby player who I drink too much beer with. So it's lovely to see you uh, uh, leading this so brilliantly. I'm very impressed with your professionalism, Chester. <laughs> we'll edit that bit out of the, uh, out of the <laughs> video. Thank you very much, Ben. I've really well, enjoyed it, though. Thank you for inviting me along. Cheers, Ben. Uh, Ivan, Charlie, hopefully you're going to stay on with us through the rest of the session and answering some questions. We're going to take a 15 minute break. So if we can be back at 10.25 UK time, Feel free to turn your cameras off and we shall see you back there at 25 past 10. Welcome back everyone. We'll just kick off in about 30 seconds time or so. So if I could just uh, ask you to turn your cameras on just so that I know you're back in the room. I'm conscious that not everybody enjoys turning their cameras on, but cameras on would really help me know that you're listening uh, and that you're there. Otherwise, I'll just be making a few kind of assumptions that a few people are just listening in and surfing on the back of that. Simon, great to see you. Thank you very much. Prashant, lovely to see you over in India. How are things, sir? All well, Chester. Uh, things are better. Things are improving. Thank you. Excellent, Excellent stuff. <laughs> I've thoughts have been with you over the past couple of weeks, that's for sure. So. Thank you for dialing in. You're about four hours uh, ahead of us, I believe, aren't you? Is that four and a half hours ahead of us? Yeah, four and a half. Lovely stuff. Welcome back, everybody. So I'm going to give you a little bit more time to work on the brand key before Amanda puts us into breakout groups to, to share and discuss, compare and contrast some of your thinking. Before I do that, I'm going to ask Sean Smith, who is the sales director at Nomads Foods, um, firstly to introduce himself and, and what he does in his role. And then I'm going to ask Sean a few questions about having gone through this exercise ahead of you and how he's applied that, because I think the context of a tool is only powerful when you apply it and you experience from other people the benefits of having actually giving it a go. So Sean, kick us off, please. Just tell us a bit about who you are and your background before I fire you with a couple of questions. Yeah, no worries at all. Good morning. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Sean Smith. I'm, as uh, Chester sort of mentioned, I'm the sales director for, um, for Bird's Eye, which is part of Nomad Foods. Uh, and for those that don't know Nomad Foods, we're, uh, we're the biggest uh, frozen food manufacturer across, uh, across Europe. And you'll probably recognize some of the brands uh, in Bird's Eye, Igloo, and Bessie's and Goodfellas and 
that last bit is probably relevant to what we're going to talk about. So my, my background is uh, my background has been in the in the FMCG since I left uni, um, and uh, worked across a number of businesses from uh, from family businesses to uh, to private equity and, and now now to know my foods. And uh, I lead a team of uh, sixty five, um, and um, I transitioned into the business uh, in two thousand and eighteen from uh, from from Aunt Bessie's. Where I was previously, uh, I've been been in Aunt Bessie's uh, for ten years, and uh, for those that don't know Aunt Bessie's, they were previously owned as a, by a family a family business, uh, and uh, and led their business very entrepreneurially. So um, when I stepped into Nomad Foods, as I'll no doubt talk about in a second, uh, I went through uh, a huge period of sort of self reflection and questioning about who I was and who I needed to maybe become, and that's me. Great stuff. Thanks, Sean. But you'd be right for Charlie to pick up the phone and say, if you're going to pivot through your career, pick up the phone and talk to me. Talking about impact then on you, having used the, the personal branding exercise, having used the brand key probably about uh, a year ago now, I think it was that we were together. What kind of impact has it had on you? It's uh, ge genuinely, Chester, it's been, it's been immense. And I think from my initial scepticism about the idea of branding myself, you know, I remember sort of being invited to uh, to the session and, you know, I probably didn't articulate this, but I was a bit sceptical about the idea of a, a brand Sean, if you like. Uh, but it, it's been hugely helpful. Uh, it's been hugely helpful uh, in just helping me better understand myself, getting comfortable with who I am. Uh, and it was interesting to certainly listen to the three speakers before uh, talk, um, particularly Ivan, um, because, you know, it was, it was this exercise that really made me think about my style and my values and, and how I showed up. So I, I initially obviously completed the exercise a few months after the integration, uh, my transition from a small business, as I, as I alluded to at the outset into this much larger, this much larger business. And, um, I, I probably I probably had a period of time where um, I was I was very anxious about who I needed to be in this sort of new in, in this new world and huge amount of anxiety about you know would I would I need to change and I was, I guess I was I was consciously consciously always wondering for that, those first sort of few months of the transition about you know would I need to would I need to become more corporate um, would I need to become a Bit of a robot who's obsessed by process and would i need to hold my personality back or would i need to shoe shuffle a little bit under the boardroom table um rather than be my usual straightforward talking self but ultimately i guess um you know would I, would i need to be somebody that i wasn't to fit in in this in this in this much bigger business you know i'd gone from working in a business where, where uh, it was entrepreneurial. We turned over around 80 million to a business that was turning over over 2 billion. And um, it was, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a concern for me, I think, if I'm, uh, if I'm brutally open. And when I, when I did the, with the work on my brand key, it genuinely was. It was one of the most seminal moments in my professional career because it allowed me to, to really take control and, and embrace who I am and think about, you know, what, what do I bring to the party? And, you know, what makes me different? And you know, my wife tells me I'm different all of the time. Um, but more importantly, um, you know, how could I bring my, my values and my beliefs and my personality into sort of how I lead in this much bigger organization? So without doubt, Chester, it, it, had a, it did really have a, a big impact on sort of how I, how I turn up. That inner child, isn't it? We've all got that inner child that kind of, you know, sometimes just keeping it at bay, giving a, some people call it the inner chimp, kind of just gnawing away at us, giving us that self-doubt, that potential imposter syndrome that people talk about. How do you hold that and keep that in check? And definitely what I've heard you talk about is the tool has helped you just structure some of your thinking to go about that. How did the tool then help you with your leadership style? Um, I can't begin to tell you just how valuable it was in helping me sort of get comfortable and then develop my style, um, particularly over the last year or so. Um, it, it, this tool, it was my, you know, for those that are familiar with Alan Partridge, it was my aha moment, you know, um, the moment where I, I, I realised who I was um, and um, I, I then began to become much more conscious about leading as, leading as me, 
and um, not in the style of somebody who, who I thought that I needed to be. So I became, I became really comfortable with that. And without doubt, um, I've consciously then developed my leadership style, focusing on, you know, the heart of that brand key and, um, and what it is that I really do and what I bring to the, what I bring to the party. And no, no longer, no longer do I feel the need to be somebody else. And I'm comfortable. I'm increasingly comfortable with who I am. And I'm proud of what I stand for. So, you know, when I did the exercise, I, I, I identified probably four things that, you know, it may sound cliche, but it's facts that I stand for. And, you know, those four things. So the first thing is, is authenticity and leading without trying to be that, that, that other person. Um, you know, the second thing is links really is always being straightforward. Um, for those that can probably uh, pick an accent out, I'm from Yorkshire and, uh, you know, my, my father wouldn't have it any other way. We're, we're straightforward to, uh, talking folk. And so I've, I've remained true to that. And the, the other thing is, you know, always I've always tried to demonstrate drive and encourage others to, 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 to drive to as well and supporting them. But I suppose ultimately, Chester, um, my, my, my brand essence, it's about always being true to myself and without getting too deep into, I guess, what that means to me, um, I guess it's being comfortable with embracing sort of all, all aspects of, of who I am and being comfortable expressing my voice. And I've learned it's okay to speak up, um, to be open, to share when I'm not okay too, actually. And, and more importantly, I've seen real value over the last year in, in demonstrating vulnerability in the way I lead, uh, both professionally, but also personally as well. So look, I think in, in, 2000, uh, in 2019, 20, I, I took my mask off consciously and decided I was gonna bring my whole self to the table. I was not gonna try to be somebody else. And, as a result of that and other tools as well. So I've spent a lot more time trying to sort of really understand who I am, um, what my, my values are, what my preferences are, uh, what, my, what my blind spots are as well. And, and the, the upshot of all of that is I feel like personally, I've just become, become a better leader and a better operator and, and the results have flowed from that, uh, the how, if you like. And I guess that was gonna be the nature of my next question really was, you know, it's fine for you. Um, you've taken that mask off and they've seen the whole you turn up. What impact has it had on the business and, and probably your team at the same time? Yeah, I think, um, this is for me, a, a personal branding, the personal branding exercise had benefits initially, obviously for myself, but I do think it goes much further than that. For my business, um, we, we've widely embraced sort of concepts of personal branding, whether that's been as conscious as we could uh, or not is, is, is probably a, a discussion point, but I'm lucky to work alongside a uh, board that encourage, really encourages individuality and people being authentic. And, you know, when, um, when, when Nomad bought the business that I was in alongside another business, they, they bought, we, 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 in essence had to create a new culture uh, for the, for the new sort of business of scale. And, We've done that by really embracing um, people's difference and, and encouraging people to sort of bring their own essence to the party. And uh, as a result of that, that's definitely sort of got the most out of people uh, and people's strengths um, across the board. So that, that, that would be the impact at a business level. And over the last four years, the business has doubled in, in size. Um, so, so without a doubt, that's played a massive part in that. Um, at a team level, um, I'm hoping my team would uh, say they've seen the benefits of me of me leading authentically. Um, you know, I think as the branding exercise helped me uh, understand my style better and uh, my preferences and my strengths. It, it helped me when I was looking to sort of build a new senior team. So, you know, I, I then built a senior team which was very different in style and strengths, and I've got a very diverse team uh, that has very different strengths. But we're a team that has values and. And, and, and each member has been given, therefore, the space to, to really express themselves. And um, hopefully that's, that's really, well, I know it's benefited them because I've seen people develop uh, and I've seen the results they've delivered. So that it started as an exercise for me and for me to discover myself. But I've just tried to, um, at every opportunity, I share the brand key. It's one of the pieces of paper which lives, in, lives on my desk. So whenever I, uh, whenever I coach, I always get it out because it, it, it's the one it's one exercise that really sort of stuck with me. 
So it sounds like if it's there on your desk, is it, is it the kind of thing you've come back to again and refined and revised or, and updated? Because we heard Ben and Ivan and Charlie talk about this journey that they were on. Yeah, I have. I've, I revisit it quite. I revisit it quite frequently, and I particularly, as I say, I use it when when I'm sort of coaching either internally or externally. And I think if I think about how my brand's developed over since I did the original exercise, the reality is my core remains the same. But the real development for me has come from me just getting much more comfortable with what my essence is. And uh, since I did the exercise, and I've increasingly led without my mask on, um, the impact and reception that I've had from my colleagues, my peers and, and customers, it's given me more confidence to continue to embrace me and, and just me. And, um, and and I've tried to promote that with, within my team, uh, particularly. And if I think about it, I'm the most settled that I've ever been in my in my career. I work in a, I work in a business that, that genuinely operates and encourages people to be just themselves. You know, we've, we've, we've launched a number of initiatives like that Just Be You campaign. We promote a culture of coaching and and mentorship so at the heart of all of that we encourage individuality and uh you know so 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 that's helped me sort of i suppose cement the work that i really did and then i would say the one thing that's probably changed uh, or evolved over certainly the last year um is my ability or my my willing to sort of show vulnerability and um being prepared to open up with my with my team and my my peers and i've realized probably as I've become more comfortable and confident about just being me, that, you know, it's, it's and removing the mask, it's, it's good to open up about the fact you're not, you're not Superman um, and you actually might need a bit of help uh, to some of some problems and um, you get better results and solutions. So the more I've opened up both with my, my team and I've, be, I've also been helped by a really good coach, actually, um, I, I feel as though my, my impact uh, is being has been pronounced, but that's my team as well. So yeah, I continually revisit it, Chester. Jordan, you've shown a huge vulnerability uh, in a in a public arena now. Having I know some of your team are on this call as well, so I can see a few nodding faces and a few wry smiles from people like Emma there, as you've been talking and she's been and seeing the impact of what you've done, uh, talked about. There's a question in the chat, Sean. I wondered if you might go back and answer that in the chat around what was the process like. It's from Giles Shepherd. Um, uh, thank you so much for showing up because I think it gives real context into why bother doing this and the impact that it's had. It's also given people a little bit more time to think about their own personal brand key. And I'm now going to ask you to share in groups of three just some of your thinking. So I'm going to ask Amanda in just a second to press go on a breakout groups. We're going to go for about 12 or 13 minutes and then we're going to ask for some reflections from the group uh, when we come back in. And what I'd like you to do is probably spend about four minutes each. So just conscious of each other's time, just talking about how did you get, how close to the essence did you get? Um, and potentially some of the aha moments that you've kind of uh, seen or heard as you've been listening and working with the tool. So what are some of the aha moments and how close to the essence have you got? So Amanda, if we're good to go, you could open those up. I okay. think you're going to have to click on the link button. Is that right, Amanda? I was just about to say, for those of you who have avoided Zoom quizzes in the last 15 months and haven't done this before, you'll get an, an, an invitation to join a room. You need to click on that link. See you soon. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back, Nick. Apologies, it looks like you were in a room by yourself, and we couldn't we couldn't get you back. So I do apologise, Nick. So hopefully you had a good session sharing with yourself there. <laughs> I do apologise. Bit more reflection time. Bit more reflection time. It was indeed. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back, Rich. I'm loving your background there, Rich Willis. That's a phenomenal background there. There we go. Check that out. <laughs> great stuff. Great stuff. Well, look just keen for anybody that is confident enough to share uh, with yourselves just to kind of maybe put your hands up um, and just share some of the discussions that were going on in some of those groups that would be really really useful yes, Rich, sir. just yeah. uh, you've got the poll open now do you want that open now or later oh have i actually opened it have i yeah uh, just shall i close it down for now uh yes please yeah. okay done you're fine thank you so apologies for that. Um, Rich, I might come to yourself because uh, I'm co conscious that I know you're uh, quite happy to, to speak up. 
if you could just bring yourself off mute, just some of the discussions that came out of your group there. What were some of the aha moments? And then I might uh, come to Will Johnson and uh, and uh, who else? Alan Rowe. I can see Alan Rowe there as well. Hopefully you weren't in the same groups, so maybe we could just get some feedback. Some of the aha moments or some of the comments and things that were shared in your breakout. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, I, jo jo I had Joanne, so we were lucky enough, or maybe Joanne was unlucky enough, to, there was just two of us in our room. Um, so Joanne had to battle with me rabbiting on for, for, for 10 minutes. And she did get a word in, so um, so that's absolutely fine. But I, th I think we, we were chatting about, you know, certainly the two of us and probably many people on this call have either been in, uh, you know, a, a bigger kind of corporate environment, as Sean was say, saying earlier about, you know, the kind of the mask and do we take off the mask? And it, it, I, I see line managers being this way, so therefore I want to be that way. Um, and I think for, for me, kind of personally, talking to Joanne, it's it's something that um, ever, ever, ever since from being a kid, I've always wanted to work for myself. I've always just had that, that vision. I've always wanted to do it. Um, so, so for me, it, I never really had a, kind of a, an Alan Partridge moment. I'm going to use Sean's term. I think it was great. I not kind of had that that kind of that 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 right aha uh -huh, that this this is the way I want to go because I've always wanted to kind of do it. But I think certainly for me, it was um, I, I was explaining to Joanne that in in kind of previous roles, I, I've in the early days, it was kind of a my way or the highway kind of approach. And I think the thing for me was actually how I interact with others was 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 the critical part for me. And there was two things that, that changed the, the my approach. And one of them was reading the Chimp Paradox. We talked about the the, the you know, Chimp earlier by Dr. Steve Peters. Um, and then the second one was doing my colour profiles. Uh, however many years ago I did that now, goodness, probably nearly ten years ago, to understand actually my self awareness um, and you know clearly how I interact with others. Um, and then trying to adapt my approach to those that are not necessarily on the same journey as me, because I think, you know, when you are authentic and you, you are all the things that kind of Sean was talking about, you naturally will, people will follow that, that buy into your, your vision. Um, but equally, there are team members that don't necessarily buy into your vision. So you have to try and pivot and, and, and adapt your approach and flex your style a little bit. Um, wow. And I think for me, they were the, the, the two big points. Fab, thanks, Rich. Thanks for sharing that. Will Johnson and Alan, then Alan Rowe, just keen to hear some. Uh, did you have an aha moment in your breakout? Well, we, well, I'll, I'll tell you what we spoke about, and then uh, perhaps there's a little bit of an aha moment. But we spoke about how it was we were never going to write uh, uh, complete the key in a, in a 15 minute coffee break. Not that that was your intention for a second, but it, you know, the, what I, I came into the reason why I joined this call is because it's not something I've really thought through. It comes up every so often. And I wanted to explore it to see whether it's something I should be thinking about, simply. Um, and uh, what 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 it's made me realise is there's an awful lot to think about, actually. Um, and so we we spoke about that. We spoke about uh, I was with Ivan and Jamila, by the way. Um, and we we spoke about at the 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 how the you know in the group we didn't have um, uh, we we all seemed pretty comfortable in our own skin. There were no challenges around having to take off a mask. Um, and how the, the work life and the home life blend is, uh, is, is right there. It's, there is no sort of one stops and the other starts. Um, so, yeah, we went on to then talk about uh, authenticity being absolutely key, authenticity and integrity uh, as, a, as a sort of, that, uh, uh, you just have to get that right. Um, and, you know, this is important for, you know, get, getting this right and understanding what our, what our, our, our brand or what's the heart, the essence of what's at the top of the key uh, is important, whether you're actually have any direct reports and, and are on paper a leader um, or whether you're an aspiring leader or indeed whether you have no direct reports because we're all leaders, actually. And, um, and, and, and it's really important to establish and get, get this right, um, regardless of whether you're actually a leader on paper. Um, uh, yeah, and I guess ultimately you know, we, we went on sort of the, 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 I think the, if I had a light bulb moment, it's it's not about me actually, it's about how other people feel and what other people think. And, and that's, uh, that's like, hang on a second, well, that's a bit different, isn't it? Because here's me thinking I've got to work out whether I'm a Land Rover or a BMW. Uh, yeah. Outside in versus inside out. Absolutely. Yeah. Love yeah. the builds, love the personal reflection that's going on there that, ah, oh, actually there's a way to do that. Mm. Alan, 
can I ask from you and then I'm going to open up a poll. What aha moments that were happening in, in the Litchfield area? <laughs> uh, good to see you again, Chester. Um, I've got to leave actually for a call, so I'll be brief and then I can catch up with you later if needs be. Yeah, um, yeah I think I think definitely the exercise can't be done in 15 minutes. Um, we all agreed that and I think it deserves a lot more time put into it can definitely see how important it is as well, as well as the other things that have been shared earlier this morning. I think it's been very useful. Um, but I think the mask thing came up again, um, and, and Mark was saying that um, the worst advice that he'd been given was actually to keep work and home life separate and to keep the personalities separate. And, and I think COVID has brought us closer to our homes and work life mix. Um, so therefore I think, you know, we, we, it, to, to avoid the conflicts, the inner conflicts that we're going to have, the pain points that we're going to feel if we're projecting something fake, mm. it's vital to be ourselves. And actually by being ourselves, we're unlocking that sort of um, energy of honesty, which actually is quite propulsive compared to when you're, when you're faking it. So I think, I think that, was, that was kind of a key thing. Um, and for me personally, I... I have a tendency to want to impress and I think that that makes me sometimes put something fake on but but I've always um, written about masks historically and, and the need to pull them off because um, to get your message home you've got to be honest. Great thank you Alan appreciate you sharing that and we'll speak later. Tim uh, seek a, a hand raised there were you having a build and then uh... And well, then... no, we, I was in a, in a call with uh, Prasant and, and Simon, and a little bit off piste, I guess, but um, I just I had a, a question is what was the average age of, of the people on, on the session today? Because I think we all get to a stage where we're kind of we've we've we're in our careers, we've learned a lot. And, you know, we're in that kind of good sweet spot of, of being able to look back and look forward. And, and I just think it would be great to to find a way within our organizations to, to you know, actually bring younger people into conversations like this because somebody said it is that we're all leaders and, and I think if we all knew what we know now you know we'd probably make some changes maybe 15 years earlier in our lives so you know that's that's the kind of element I think that is interesting in terms of a topic like this um, because nobody now will go into a career and stay in that career their whole life right so there's going to have people with multiple jobs and things like that so how do we share our learning and our values with, with people who are younger so that they can evolve and, and, and be and be better as well. So that's Thank my you, light bulb. Per perfect build. I mean, I, I guess I look at my three-year-old who is just himself the whole time. And yet we learn or we think we learn how to act in business. And I think that's the kind of aha moment that lots of us are going through at the moment. And that's why so many people are thinking, well, is this the right career for me? And that's why different people are choosing different paths. Uh, Leroy, I can see a hand raised there as well, sir. Is, is, is that a hand raised uh, or did uh, you hit the, uh, the, the hand button? You're on mute. Yeah, sorry. I actually had my physical hand raised beforehand. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I sat with uh, Mark and Al. And um, again, the same thing that... Um, Al raised up earlier was the whole wearing of the mask, uh, a different persona with your work life. And me for one, I've always struggled with even trying to do that. Uh, I've never lasted long in a workplace. So I've always, you know, I ended up having to work for myself because them trying to force you to wear a mask within your corporate um, being, and I've just never been one for it. Um, be who you are, be who you be, and that's how you build your own clientele, that's how you grow as a person. Um, and even that in itself, being who you be, being who you are, is, is a difficult process. It's not it a is. easy process. Absolutely. It's come to acceptance with who you are, and sometimes that's not always good, but that's growth, that's, 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 that's development, that's becoming a leader of, of, of self. Of, and we're, of, we're talking about emotions here as well, isn't it? And, and I know for myself, white Caucasian male, I was taught not really to talk about your emotions very much. And therefore yeah. now being told to talk about them is actually quite difficult to, to kind of bring them up and share them, particularly in a public yeah, it's, environment. It's, it's, a, it's a quality and a strength to be able to talk about yourself and to really talk about the deepest parts of who you are. I mean, if we just take someone like Mike Tyson for argument's sake as an example, 
he's a man who's expressed himself on, on the deepest facets of who he is, the worst and now the best, you know. And um, again, I think it's a, a, a very important part of growth, being real to yourself and to those who you choose to work with or amongst. Great yeah. builds. Thank you very much. Bertrand, I can see you've raised a hand there. We'll come to yourself and then I'm going to open up a poll just to get some uh, a barometer in terms of where you want to spend the rest of your focus. Bernard. Yeah, Chester, thank you very much. Now, very quickly, uh, um, I'm surprised and very, uh, it's a very nice surprise. I have struggled myself uh, for many years in corporate life and I was fighting against the mask and, and kind of also, I always was looking for some kind of authenticity and I was all very outspoken. It never helped me uh, really in a corporate life where you need to have the mask, etc. And I heard this branding things, personal branding, since social medias are, 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 are now accelerating everything. And I was always resisting so much. I have no Facebook and I resisted years LinkedIn and now I'm on LinkedIn and, and all that. And I, I, I know one of your coaches, uh, Mark Francis, and uh, so that I, I, how I came to, uh, to, to uh, use Pyre. And I said, well, I know him and he is really an authentic guy. So I will want to hear about personal branding, which for me, I thought was taking on a uniform, define which uniform I want and put it on. Uh, I want to hear from him. And I am so surprised and I thank everybody being so authentic and, and kind of, you know, uh, being showing vulnerability as well. And, and as you said before, on, on a public uh, forum like that, because it's it's exactly the opposite of what I was thinking about. So I'm very happy. That's my aha moment. I think a lot of people share that. So I'm, I'm just inspired. It's, it's nice. So I just want to say that. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Colin, can I can I take you got a build? Yeah, uh, Chester, it's just a, a, a quote that my personal coach gave me a while back. And it said, whether you like it or not, uh, we are the CEO of Me Limited. And one of our most important roles is to be the sales and marketing director of a brand called you. Yeah? And if you're your authentic self, then in reality, you have no competition. And it was just something that he, he, he said to me that stuck in my memory that I thought probably was a, was a good build for you. Thank you very much. Some poignant words there, succinct as always. So we talked about the fact that 15 minutes was not really going to be enough time to do the brand key. Um, we've had some time. I'd just like you to answer the poll. Where do you feel, and this is a multiple, you can tick it more times than uh, once if need be. Where do you, which blocks do you want to spend more time and work on? You can pick as many as you like. If you think you've got your brand key nailed down the bottom, none of them. I'm really happy with my personal brand key. Hopefully you can see that poll. Yeah, we can see the poll. All good. Couple more minutes for the reflectives in the group to uh, to dial into. Couple more people just choosing not to share just yet. Maybe they're so deep in thought that uh, they need a bit more time. Just give this another twenty seconds, and then I'll just share the results because I just think it's interesting for us to look at. You know, how do we feel as a group? how we're responding as a group. Jester, can you just reshare that, please? Because it's just dropped off. Uh, OK, you may have just have done on your machine because you OK, voted. that's fine. If you can see, that's fine. Can 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 just hands up. Can you see the poll? Yeah, I think it okay. dropped off. Gotcha. So hopefully that is now sharing the results. There yes, we go. It, yes, it is. That's great. Great stuff. There we go. So actually, it's fascinating. A few more people in terms of what makes me different and my essence. So a little, quite a lot more time really distilling down how I want to get a succinct definition of who I am. Those are probably the big two. Um, and also the needs of others, putting your shoe, yourself in the shoes of others and looking back at you and saying, 
what do I, they need to hear from me for me to lead them effectively? Great stuff. So look, thank you very much for doing that. Thanks for participating. And also thank you very much for um, sharing your thoughts and builds. Amanda, I'm going to pivot out to you now just to share a video, which is a video from a gentleman called Grant Leboeuf. We like Grant Leboeuf because he is a provocative individual. He's uh, not short of uh, a word or two, but this is the second level up in terms of that building, in terms of marketing and media. This is the only bit in terms of promotion of self that I'm going to share with you. And I'm going to do it because I wanted to then lead it into thinking about the services and products that you deliver to other people. So operating yourself as a brand would be, Amanda. Why are people's social media profiles so bad? Let's face it, we know that if someone's going to work with you, there's a good chance they're going to search for you online and find, for example, your LinkedIn profile, which is written, after all, by you. So why are so many of them written so badly? Why do people put something like, I've been working in insurance for 27 years, instead of writing, I am an insurance expert? Surely the second one comes across much better. And why is it that people will post photos that look like they've come out of a horror scene because there's half an arm hanging over them because they cropped a holiday picture when they were sunning it in Marbella. We all walk around with digital cameras in our pocket all the time. Surely you can take a decent photograph for your LinkedIn profile. You know, we're not all media personalities. If you Google David Beckham, there's a very good chance that most of what's written about him is written by other people and journalists. But when people Google you, chances are 90% of what they find was written by you. If you're the writer, at least make it good. At least roll the dice in your own favour and make sure that it works for you. We all know it's important, so make sure you do it properly and sort your life out. Well, at least your social media. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comment box. Thank you, Amanda. To receive yes, regular marketing yes, updates. Bear with. Yes, that's right. <laughs> bear with. Thank you for doing all that. So great stuff. Thanks very much, Amanda. So we're talking very much in terms of you as a brand down here, how do you promote yourself? Uh, Grant's dialing that up in terms of at least control your controllables, control your controllables. Some of his other media stuff we like as well, because he talks about you're not just in business anymore. You're also a media company because it's not about what you do. It's about the attention and the audience that you hold. So I thought he's got some really interesting stuff through the Sticky Marketing Club. Go online to YouTube if you want to read some more about that. I'm going to introduce you to a second tool, which Amanda is going to load into the chat facility. It's a document that you can download again, and it's going to be about this. We're going to talk to you about the product and services proposition wheel, your proposition as a leader. So again, just taking the idea of a brand like, say, this one here, Heinz Baked Beans, why would I pay more for something versus this that's exactly the same size as a different color and it says beans on it? What is it about Heinz that gives me trust in the brand that makes me pay more for it? Lift that analogy to yourself and start thinking about your career and your salary. Why should people knowingly employ you for the salary that you demand based on them not knowing who you are, what you do or what you stand for? The services and propositions wheel is about brand you. And we're going to take you through uh, just the first bit of this. Um, if you want to find out more, then please just link into us and we can then help you either in a coaching capacity or uh, with the rest of your organization. But it's about what do you do? How do people find you? How do they onboard with you? Uh, how do they use you? Uh, in the in the kind of in the business sense of the term and then potentially if you are in a transactional relationship how do you part company how do they pay for you and how do you help them so we're going to lift what brands do and start applying them to ourselves and they start with features and benefits now your linkedin profile or your cv or your resume is full of facts features they're all about you, they're features about you, but people don't buy features, they buy benefits. People don't buy features, they actually buy into the benefits of what those features do for them. So let's take a bit of an abstract example, shall we? Let's take a white van man, right? 
the features of a white van man or buying a white van versus maybe having a truck or a taxi are the capacity that it can carry, the fuel that it, you put in it, um, potentially um, the ability you know, to drive, the performance, for example. Those are all features of having a white, white van. But the man that drives it is more interested in how efficient will this make me? Can I do more deliveries in one day than another? Fascinating to see how Amazon is turning this model upside down and people are now doing it in their cars. Maybe a diesel engine's more efficient, but he might then be thinking about, well, what's the environmental impact of that? He doesn't need an HGV license to drive one of these. So he can carry big payloads potentially uh, when, uh, where a truck would, would require much more cost to him. I'll leave the bits down the end because uh, they're, they're all a little bit jokey in terms of being able to cut people up and get away with it. But the essence are is don't sell the features, sell your benefits. And in terms of features, in the pack, you have got this features wheel. So it's all around what is important and at what time. So selling what benefits are most important depending on what does my audience need? You put yourself in their shoes looking back at you. And then at what time do they need it? So for example, must have, you know, what are the must haves behind you? Do you need qualifications? Do you need credentials? Um, are you fit for purpose? Do you fit the role, the, uh, the brief? Uh, do you fit the leadership role that they might be looking for? Potentially the needs, however, are more concealed. Maybe it's about where you're from or your background or that you bring something new that other people have not seen before. It's about tapping into that need state and then seeing how do you promote that. It might be the way that you come across, the way that you hold yourself or that you fit into the culture that's there. Your multi-sensory element is that people would make judgments by eyes and they'll do that through social media, but they'll do ears when they're listening Social media like YouTube, as we've shown you, is a great media for recalling stuff. How many of you are actually putting material out onto YouTube, the second most looked at search engine in the world, and promoting your goods, services, leadership style, the way that you come across? Doesn't work for every leader, of course. It depends whether or not what type of business you're in. And that's why context matters. The importance is picking out the right benefits. If you want to read more, it's in your pack. What I'm going to ask you to do, though, is I'm going to ask you to spend about five or 10 minutes just looking at the proposition tracker. I'm going to ask you to look at the different elements of the proposition wheel. And I'm going to ask you to just think about what are the benefits? What are the benefits that I bring to each element and maybe what elements do I maybe need to work on more? How do I bring value to those that I'm seeking to influence? How do I bring value to those that I'm trying to inspire? And where are the pain points? Because we'll move on to those in a bit. So what are the benefits? Focus in on your benefits to start with and then we'll pivot and we'll then look at where are some of the pain points. So 10 minutes, got this as a background. I'm gonna walk off screen. You can turn your cameras off, you can turn your mics off. 10 minutes thinking about that. Just let me know in chat that you've got the pack and that you can work with it. Okay, Jamila and Emma Jane, I'm just, uh, you're in my field of view, so apologies. I just wondered if you could share some of the thoughts that are going through your mind, uh, having read, read through the the proposition wheel and what some of the benefits are that you think which i can have those uh, eight boxes if you kind of put your your key benefits jamila yeah so um i read the wheel and realized that i need to spend more time really understanding the wheel and um, when you initially look at it it's really difficult to process because you know who am i as a product or service and i think it's it's become apparent I'm an aspiring leader. I'm not in a direct leadership role at the moment. So for me, this whole experience has been about who do I want to become as a leader? So it's, I found it 
been really thought provoking. Um, but something that I have been thinking about and something that I'm reflecting on now is um, failures and whether they're actually failures because it's in the in the tracker and I used to be really terrified of making mistakes and I thought that if I made a mistake it was going to show a weakness or a vulnerability and as a young woman coming into industry of an ethnic background I didn't feel comfortable revealing a vulnerability or a weakness because I just thought you know there's the competition I need to be like this I need to be like that but actually now seeing younger people coming into industry I realized in order for me to grow, I need to accept my failures and be honest. And actually, it's the only way for me to grow and be a better leader or, sorry, an emerging leader. So I don't think it's quite what you've asked me, but it's just mm -hmm. upon reflection, this is where my mind is. And I think it's a fascinating uh, self-reflection, isn't it? I mean, if, if you think about where most accidents happen, Jamila, it's at takeoff and landing, mm. right? So the most likely time, and I'm, we're all not flying at the moment, so you don't need to worry, but it's either three minutes after takeoff or it's eight minutes before uh, landing are the most likely times that you're likely to have an accident. And as a new and emerging leader taking off and thinking about how you brand yourself and how you choose to show up, whether or not you choose to put a mask on or not is a, a fundamental decision for you, isn't it? What is the impact that you want to achieve based on the intent that you're going after? Are they this one and the same? And you've heard a number of people talking about authentic leadership. Thank you very much for sharing that. Emma Jane. Sorry, put my headphone down, you'll hear me then. Um, so I went through and answered all the areas. My, I don't have, I do have a product to sell and I have a service to sell but it's all internal so it's not like somebody's paying for my service in that literal transaction of money sense however I'm sure um, if those services that I were providing were or, or myself and the team are providing were of a shoddy standard then we'd soon know about it and in the literal sense or, or sort of um, sense of paying for my services they won't be paid for very much longer um, so I think um, sort of similarly to Jamila it's, it's about looking at where you want to go and what that direction is I'm, I'm probably at a different point in my career to Jamila I've probably been about 20 years older than her unfortunately um, but it's it's continuing that just because I am that bit older it doesn't mean that I don't still have aspirations and desires to to grow and and to become whatever it is my direction of travel is taking me um and it's being able to pivot as well not just single-mindedly thinking i'm going in this direction this direction but actually being able to sort of go off on a different direction through whatever reasons whether it be you know covid might have had a big impact on people to then pivot your services your products your offering mm. or or any it doesn't have to be quite as you know catastrophic if you like as covid but it can be for whatever reason it can have be a small thing and actually from my point of view it's being able to bring my team and my offering along that journey with that pivot and with that change and make, being able to to continue to to grow myself and the others with me so yeah that's probably you, my thing your the context that i've taken it from is your internal influencing though so you see yourself leading from within and to take Colin's point earlier on it's about seeing yourself as brand you the CEO of your own business yeah and and how do you lead your career because to your point you still have aspirations I still have aspirations of the types of things that I want to achieve as well and it's that lifetime learning and growing and developing within myself I'm mm. driven by a motivation called spirit and therefore new is really important to me consultancy then gives me that that kind of new element which continues to tick that box mm -hmm. Colin you've got to build and then I'm going to come to uh, Paula for some uh, thoughts and I'm also going to uh, come to where have they gone uh, Kate Perkins as well please yeah hi Chester I, I think the uh, the video from Grant was very stimulating really because it reminded us that uh, how we actually turn up on a, on something like LinkedIn is important so how people find you so on the proposition wheel there 
if your LinkedIn profile is not particularly good in the way you've constructed it, most of us do an off reasonable job, but he gave us some really good thoughts on how to actually improve it. But then the scary thing is, is if people now are looking for you on social media, what happens when they look at your Facebook page? Is there a picture of you being drunk face down on the, on the, on the lawn, for example, or whatever? So it's, it, again, it's, if people are looking for you that way and they're looking for a certain type of person, I think you've got to think about those social media channels and the consistency that you're delivering across them. I think the other one which, was, uh, which struck with me is about setup. And that's about that first impact you make, isn't it? That's how you get, but what, how, when people arrive with you, they're setting up, you're starting to do business with them. It's how you engage with them at that moment. You know, those first impressions when you turn up in the room or turn up on the first Zoom that is, is critically important. And the other one is about leave and the legacy that you want to leave, whether you're actually going to be in an organization where you, where you have a retainer, so therefore you'll come back and visit them again and do more for them if you're a, if you're a consultant. But it's also leaving that positive memory of working with you and also talking about how you can support in the future. And I thought those are three very important elements of that proposition tracker that it's easy to forget about. Yeah. Great build. Thank you very much, Colin. Paula, and then Kate. Yeah, hi. Um, I guess I'm similar to where Emma was actually with this. Um, it's certainly very thought provoking, this is. And um, I think it's about refreshing my approach. Um, I've been in sort of leadership at various levels for many years. Um, and I've learned how to um, be more innov innovative, really, with um, younger um, management layering within the business that I work in. And actually, looking at how I can now fill their, fulfill their aspirations um, because they are different. I think I put it on the chat to how I was when I was um, moving forward my career in my 20s and early 30s within a corporate ladder. Um, and we've talked a lot about not uh, being true to yourself. And, and I think that um, my element within the business is about fulfilling my aspirations still um but also those of those people around me and it, and it is quite different and um we've got to learn to re-energize we've got to reflect and um and i've you, you almost have to keep reinventing yourself and i guess this is quite thought provoking for me in terms of um the whole process and the wheel and how you can turn your experiences and the new newness um in the way you approach your um networking and adapting and networking is really fundamentally uh changing my my experience um certainly within the last 18 months and we've learned to work differently and i think we are learning to lead differently as well what wonderful reflections and i can see you kind of then thinking about how do i set myself up to allow people to learn from me yeah? mm -hmm. what, what am i going to what tools and techniques do i need to allow people to use my experience and expertise and and how do i help so wonderful builds yeah. kate's going to come to you and then i'm just going to pivot into the final section thank you um i think similar to what the other guys have said it's a it's it's a real kind of moment of reflection i think for me um i'm one of my strengths is telling other people what they're great at and telling other people what their benefits are and, and bringing up my team and, and making sure that they are aware of how good they are in order to kind of propel them forward to kind of keep on doing great things. One of my weaknesses is not being able to do that for myself. And I think having a, a tool like this is going to give me the, the chance to sit down, really look at it and spend time actually going, you know, I. I do have this and I can do this. And I think the, the LinkedIn um, profile, that, that video is a real kind of, gosh, yeah, I really should be calling these things out a lot more than what I do. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm quite excited to kind of use this, move it forward and, and also share with my team as well, because I think they can benefit from it too. So, but again, that goes back to the focusing on them rather than focusing on me. So, and I'm a couple of years into, kind of lead it, leading leading a team so I'm I'm still learning because I kind of landed in it rather than went into it um so so yeah this is I'm finding this really useful I just need to and this is a, this is our gift to you Kate in terms of uh Sean's uh interview you heard him talking about having the brand key on his desk 
and sharing it with his team at Nomad Foods. You know, don't keep this to yourself. The more you share, just like social media, the more you're going to get in return and the more feedback that you're going to going to receive. So thank you very much for all of the, the reflections and builds. One of the thoughts that you need to just think about is this, the received experiences. So you built your plan, you go out and market yourself, and then you get start to get feedback. Is the intent and the impact the same? What are your success metrics? Just having a think about that, because not every brand gets it right. This is a, this is a piece of news that I saw on Bloomberg yesterday. Standard Life Insurance or Standard Life Aberdeen as they are, they've now rebranded themselves. But look at the feedback that they've got. They didn't do the research and they didn't ask people in terms of testing and learning. So this went straight out after their rebranding. They probably spent a fortune rebranding themselves. And it's been Aberdeen. That's the way that it's now said, apparently, phonetically, because they want to collect, connect with a more millennial generation. I'm not sure I can see to say too many words that haven't got enough vowels in it. But just be aware of the impact in your trackers that are in the pack that we've given you the areas to address. Now, I'm not going to ask you to spend time reflecting on that in this session, because I think that's for another time. If you'd like to come back to us with some of your reflections in terms of the areas that you might need to address and explore how we can help then that would be our gift to, to you to follow up in terms of further sessions. So there's enough provocation for you for one day. Hopefully that's got the, the, the gray cells going. Hopefully that's energized you in a way that's thinking, hmm, I wonder what kind of car that I want to be in the future. Amanda, back to you. Thank you. Just reflecting on my personal brand, and I don't know whether anybody's mentioned it here, but I was certainly thinking about my brand as a mother of teenagers, which is a whole other brand to think about, I have to say. Listen, call to action from us. You wouldn't expect anything less as commercial consultants. We've got two things that we'd like to invite you to do. Number one is please do book a coaching call when you get the email, which will come in the next probably 24 hours or so to say, would you like to speak more to us if you have a challenge that you'd like to talk through? Or if you would like to talk about this particular topic around personal brand, please feel free to do that. It is a really key pillar of commercial leadership. And I know that several people, Peter um, Fazel and being one of them put into the chat that it is not a sign of weakness to ask for help, um, commercial or otherwise, actually. And then the other thing is, that if you just like to know a bit more about USPI, then give us a call and we'll put 15 minutes in for you. Final call to action, a date for your diaries. Um, our managing partner, Jonathan Bruff, who is, our, who is our procurement and buying expert and works with our buying academies, um, on the 9th of September, we'll be running our next Discover session called Discover the Power of Your Negotiation Hats. An intriguing title, I think you will agree, and one which we'd love to see you join us for. So I am going to say thank you so, so much for Chester, to Chester for running our session today. It's been superb. Thank you to all of our speakers and all of our contributors. The, the chat has been really rich with, um, with a variety of, of conversations. So thank you very, very much. Enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you soon.